Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to use Gmail, even if you're a complete beginner. Let's jump in. So first, we're going to just head over to mail.google.com, and it's going to open up your Gmail account. And Gmail has become wildly popular over the last few years. And if you have any Google account, you have a corresponding Gmail account. So first, let's talk about composing emails, probably the, the main feature that you're looking for in Gmail. So when you're on this home screen, we're just gonna head over to the Compose button, real big button over here. And you click on that, it'll open up a window down here in the corner, and you can continue to scroll through your emails this way while you have this open, minimize it if you need to, or you can expand it so that it's more of a full screen here. So first you just wanna add your to box. And let's say I just wanna send an email to myself. You see when I do that, it auto populates to if you have any accounts already in your system. And then you can add your subject and then your body of your message here. Now down here, you can change some functions. If you're familiar with any sort of word processing software, you can change your fonts, you can you know, make it bold or italics. Profile, you can do bullets and lists. I mean, you could really format the email exactly how you want in there. The other thing I'll show you while we're in here is you could click on the little paper clip, you click on that, and you could add an attachment. If there's a document or something that you want to attach to there, you can add that. So let's say I want to attach that image and it will attach that image to the email as long as it's under a certain size, okay? And another option that you may need is you click on the little pen tool and you could insert a signature. And so this is a default closing to your email. If you don't have any signatures in here, you click on Manage Signatures, and you'll only have to set this up once, and then you'll be able to use it each time you do this. So we're just gonna scrunch that down here so we can see what else is on the screen. And it is taking us into our settings here. And then when you scroll down through here, you'll see Signature. So that you can create a new one. And you could just name this because you could have several different signatures. You could have personal, you could have business, you could have whatever you want. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to call this primary and we're going to click create. And then here you just type what you want that signature to look like. So you click in here and you go, Andy Canode, I'll do a little quote, have a great day. And then you can list your phone and your email or whatever you want. And then... We're just gonna minimize this so we can see everything that's in there. And once that's done, then you have that signature. And you can see you can just cr keep creating additional, you can create another one and do business. But once you have those created, they're in there. And then you could set a default down below here. So for new emails going out, let's say I wanna use my primary, you can always change that, but that is just for the sake of being able to have that available. And then what's key is if you do anything in the settings, you want to make sure you scroll down to the bottom, click on Save Changes, and it'll take you back to the main screen. We're just going to reopen our email that we were creating here. Now, once we've made that change, since we already had this email open, this is a good opportunity to show you something else that happens here, is we haven't sent this email yet, so we've created this. What we're going to do is we're going to click the X, and we're just going to close out of that, okay? Now, you can see over here on the side, we have all our navigation boxes that we're looking at. Inbox is our primary here. But then down in drafts is that email that we just created. And you see it says in red, right, real big right here, drafts. So that means this has not been sent. This is just a draft. And if you click on that, it'll allow you to go back in here and start editing. Now we've gone out of it and we've come back in. We can click on the signatures and you can see it populates with our additional signatures here. Click on primary and you can see it lists that down here as our signature. And you can make adjustments. Maybe in this one, I don't want to include the phone number so I can make that adjustment. That didn't change the format of the signature. It just changed it in this email. And you can continue typing and editing. Okay, and once you have the email exactly the way you want it, all you do is you can go down here and click send or to the right, you see little arrows. You click on that arrow and you could schedule to send that email. So let's say I want to schedule it to send tomorrow morning. 
And now it won't send right now, it'll send it tomorrow morning, which is kind of a nice feature. So let's go back into that email. I'm gonna show you another situation here. What a lot of people don't know is you can actually undo a send or pull an email back before it actually goes out. And I'll show you how to do this. Let's say we have the email typed up, we click on send, which is gonna send it immediately. You can see a pop up here and it says message sent and undo. If we click that undo, it brings it back in here and that message never was sent. It's a nice feature if you send an email and immediately realize that there was a spelling error or you forgot to attach that file. We've all done that a hundred times. You have that option to undo that. It's only for a few seconds. So let's say I didn't want to send that attachment so we could click that X, get rid of the attachment and then click send. And you can see message sent and this will disappear after a few seconds and that means the message has fully gone through. Now you can adjust that time window up to 30 seconds. I'll show you how to do that. When you go into your, when you're looking at the main screen here, up in the corner, you can see a little gear icon. That's your settings. So we're gonna open up that, then we're gonna cl click on see all settings. Then you're gonna see where it says undo send, and you have send cancellation period five seconds, which is what the default is. And you can increase that up to 30 seconds. So if you know that you're the type of person that maybe hits send a little too quick, you could change that up 30 seconds and it'll keep that little window on screen for 30 seconds. So if you decide you wanna change it, you have that option to undo that there. All right, let's talk about the emails in your e inbox. If you've just set this up, you may not have as many emails in there, but if you are have an email account for a while, it'll look something like this. This up here shows you that we're looking at the inbox and we have 566 unread messages. But what you could do is you could see the emails that come in in bold mean I haven't read them yet. So you go through there and click on the ones that you haven't read. Now, when you click on the email, it brings up the email here and then you could read it do whatever you need to in the email. And then down below, you can reply if you need to just say something, which is going to create a thread replying to that same email. Now this is from Google, says no reply, so I can't do that. Or you could forward this. So maybe this concerns somebody else. So you could click on forward, it'll take this email and it'll send it to another person if you just add their email in there. Which is going to click delete there. Now let's say once you're done reading this, you don't have any more use for it up here at the top you could click on delete and it'll remove that totally from your box. Now, let's say you have an email here like this one that I previously read and I go, oh, you know what? I, I wanna remember to do something with that. You could go over here and you could scroll over to this little envelope and you see it says mark as unread. So you click on that and it treats it just like an unread message. So that'll remind me I need to do something with that again later. You could click on multiple emails if you want to click on all of those. And then up here at the top, you can click on delete and get rid of those. You could even address any of the ones that have been unread and it'll only select the ones that are unread. You could do multitask with those. You can move those to another folder and delete them, whatever you want to do. Now, a couple other settings here is we're going to click on the gear icon here. And you could see you have a couple of different settings for depending on how you want it. And this is all about how this is displayed. So you can change the default. Right now it's on the default view, which gives you a little preview of what the email is. You could click on comfortable, which gives a little bit more view or compact, which kind of shrinks that down even more. So if you want to get more emails on the screen at one time, you could go to that. I like just sort of the default view. You could change your themes. So you could change what this background view, again, it's just a personal preference to what you want it to look like. Maybe I want some of these, I like the chess pieces there in the background, okay? And then you could have how it lists the inbox if you want the default or you want the important first or all your unread messages up at the top, however you want to organize that depending on your preference. I like having it just based on the, the date and time. And then you have your reading panel. So you could have no split or you could have right to the inbox, okay? In order to switch to that, you gotta reload it. So we're gonna have that reload. And what this does is it brings up, so you could have your list of emails here and you could have your email to be read over on this screen. So you can kind of go through your emails pretty quick that way. And then you also have conversation view, okay? 
which is basically it groups all of your emails together that are in a thread. Or if you have replied to an email, rather than having that show up as individual emails, it'll have that all as one. I always like turning that on because I like having any conversations that are back and forth, just treat that as one email. One of the other things that you'll want to see is let's say you're searching for an email that you remember getting, maybe there was a sale on something. So you could click on sale and click there and it'll bring up any emails that mention sale in there. So you can find old emails that way. All right, now let's talk a little bit about organizing your emails, okay? So across the top here, you can see that Google does some automatic organization. So you can see it kind of drops all the promotions in here. It takes the socials and puts them in here, updates. So it does some of that for you already. But let's say you want to organize them even a little bit further. And I highly recommend this just to kind of keep your inbox from looking like this, where it's just a bunch of random emails all in one place. So you see you have labels here. So if you click on the plus button, you can create a label. And let's say I want to create one for Amazon, okay? I want to keep all my Amazon emails in one account. You could organize them further by nesting them under into subcategories. We're not going to worry about that for now, but we're just going to create that. So now you have an Amazon. And you see here up at the top, we have three Amazon emails. I'm just going to click on all of those. And then when you click and hold on those, you can drag those three conversations over into the Amazon box. Now, when we open that up, it now has our Amazon emails in there. So I think this is a really good way to kind of just go through and organize your emails that way. You could create another label that needs attention. So these are things that I want to do later that I don't want to do right now. So you could go create. And let's say this about my NAS, I want to take that email and just put that into needs attention. Now you can see it has a little one there, meaning there's an unread email in that box. So I can later go into it, open that up and take the necessary actions that I need to take in that one. And so with that, you can start organizing your email. So they're all sort of in different boxes so that you can keep track of them easy. And all of those are still searchable. When you search mail, it's going to search all the boxes so you don't have to worry about that. So with that, you are up and running with Gmail. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.